Therefore, son of man, prophesy, and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel, as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. I am enjoying our journey going through end time prophecy. I hope you're enjoying and appreciating the truth the Most High is making available at this time. We cannot rely on the beast culture and its religious institutions to make the truth about end time prophecy known. Religion have buried the truth of the Most High's words in lies. That is why the people have no idea what is coming their way. Most people believe they will be raptured out of here. My mind can't comprehend how the very people who participate in the abominations of the fallen angels. The scripture said, the angels taught mankind all of the wickedness they know. Until this day, mankind continue to practice the abominations the fallen angels have taught them. The scripture said in the book of Enoch, our downfall came because we learned all the abominations of the fallen angels. I heard the voice of the angel saying, These are the angels who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men and seduced the children of men into committing sin. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the satans and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. For the life of me, I cannot understand how the people who participate in the abominations of the fallen angels with pride believe they will be raptured out of here when the time comes for the Most High to execute his judgments upon all the sinners who practice the abominations learned from the fallen angels. The dreams and fairy tales Satan had promised many of you, he deceived you. Satan had been making promises from the very beginning. Satan has yet to fulfill any of those promises he made to the angels and mankind who follow him. Satan made many promises to Adam and Eve. Until this day, he has yet to fulfill those promises. O Adam, ask him who deceived thee to give thee the divine nature he promised thee, or to make thee a garden as I had made for thee, or to fill thee with that same bright nature with which I had filled thee. Ask him to make thee a body like the one I made thee, or to give thee a day of rest as I gave thee, or to create within thee a reasonable soul as I did create for thee, or to remove thee hence to some other earth than this one which I gave thee. But, O Adam, he will not fulfill even one of the things he told thee. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said unto him, Canst thou make me a garden as God made for me? Or canst thou clothe me in the same bright nature in which God hath clothed me? Where is the divine nature thou didst promise to give me? Where is that fair speech of thine thou didst hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said unto Adam, Thinkest thou that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I ask. Therefore did I fall, and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell, and with you also, whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. As you heard in the scripture, Satan made promises to Adam and Eve that he couldn't fulfill. Satan had made many empty promises to mankind and religion. 
There's a large population of people who believe Satan's lies. They are waiting for Satan to fulfill those promises. Most of those promises can't be fulfilled until it's too late. A lot of people are gambling when it comes to Satan's promises in religion. You have to wait until the very end to see if those promises will come to pass. For example, the people who believe in the rapture doctrine, they have to wait until the great tribulation to see if they will be raptured away. There's no guarantee they will be raptured. Some people don't even know if they have the Holy Ghost. There's some people who don't even know if they are truly saved. Yet in religion, they are giving Satan all of this glory and praise when they are not certain if they will be raptured out of here or even receive any of those promises made to them for being religious. All Satan did was inserted his lies into the authorized Bible and many people believed it. There's a lot of people bowing down to worship Satan in exchange for power and salvation. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So many people have bowed down to worship Satan. Some people willingly worship Satan, while a great majority have no idea they are worshiping Satan. This is why the gospel of the kingdom must be heard in all the kingdoms of this world before the end comes. That way, the people will have the truth to make better choices. The Most High is giving his creatures the opportunity to know the truth before their world is flipped upside down. The scripture said, after the truth is heard, the end have come. You don't want to wait until the last second to find out that you're not being raptured out of here. Israelites, that is why you need to renew your mind. Don't put all of your hope into religious doctrines. You truly have to seek the face of the Most High to get to the truth. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can reveal the truth of the Most High's words to you. Religious doctrines are made to be a stumbling block to keep you in bondage. Everyone will be held accountable for their sins. Being raptured away is not going to prevent you from standing before the judgment seat. Everyone will be judged for everything they have done, whether good or bad. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The scripture you just heard should open your eyes to the false promises Satan made about Jesus taking the sins of the world away. Why is the day of the Lord coming swiftly upon all the heathens if Jesus took the sins of the world away? Israelites, allow the Most High to show you the falsehoods inserted in the authorized Bible by the workers of iniquity. Don't shut down because the truth is overwhelming for you. Allow the truth to do the good work in you. The truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. By now, everyone should know the truth hurts. The truth must open your heart to bring forth the change needed to set you free. The truth is not going to align with religious falsehoods. Stop trying to make the truth confirm fairy tales told to you in religion. The truth is meant to sanctify you. Allow the truth to sanctify you. Some Israelites and strangers are willing to give up on the promises, the truth of the Most High's words made to those who walk uprightly. Some Israelites continue to struggle with the abundance of truth the Most High unleashed into the world because of religious doctrines. Some Israelites are lost in their convictions that they are not giving the Most High the opportunity to renew their minds. Too many Israelites are willing to trade their glory for less than. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Religious doctrines are not the only doctrines that are destroying our people. The awakening have attracted a lot of workers of iniquity and people with no knowledge trying to lead. A lot of doctrines of devils was created in the Hebrew Israelite religion as well. Those doctrines are increasing the sins of Israel. Majority of those doctrines piggyback from the doctrines from Rome. 
Some Israelites would throw away a good thing just because they cannot have the lust of the flesh. They desire more than salvation in the kingdom itself. Some Israelites are closing their ears to truth because the truth denied them the lust of the flesh. Satan have deceived many in the awakening through the lust of the flesh. The spirit of revenge is destroying some Israelites in the awakening. The scriptures warn us about being consumed with the downfall of our enemies. Rejoicing over your enemies' downfall can turn the wrath of the Most High away from your enemies. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. We should let the will of the Most High be done. Turn to repentance so that you can find forgiveness of sins. So much was revealed to us about the millennial reign. As I stated in the previous messages, the millennial reign is not the end of it all. The millennial reign is the Most High fulfilling the covenant he made for the righteous to inherit the earth. The Most High is a covenant God. He will fulfill everything he promised. The millennial reign is the righteous opportunity to reign with the Messiah. You learned that the Most High already chose the individuals that would lead. The Messiah said the Most High would be the one to choose the leaders in the millennial reign. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But who sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. For in those days the elect one shall arise, and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them, for the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved. And the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel, for the Lord of Spirits has given them to him and has glorified him. You also learn that the righteous that rise in the first resurrection will overcome the second death. There are some Israelites that believe the righteous that resurrect in the first resurrection will be dying during the millennial reign. That is not true, Israelites. The righteous will live and reign with the Messiah for 1,000 years. The second death don't have any power over them. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. I don't know why some Israelites dismiss what the scriptures say. The scripture in the book of Revelation clearly say that the second death won't have power over the righteous that rise in the first resurrection. These people would become priests that reign with the Messiah during the millennial reign. The generations alive before the flood lived for hundreds of years. Adam lived over 900 years. Noah died at 950 years old. Our ancestors live a long life in those generations. It shouldn't be out of the ordinary for the righteous to reign with the Messiah for 1,000 years. The scripture said it is appointed for men to die only once after that judgment. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The Messiah's judgment seat is when the righteous will be judged according to their works. In addition, they will receive their rewards as well. If the righteous died and was judged already, why are they dying a second time? They have already overcome death. That is why the scripture said, Blessed are those who participate in the first resurrection. For them, the second death have no power over them. The second death is the lake of fire. The righteous are not the people going to the lake of fire. The lake of fire is reserved for the sinners and the fallen angels. Everyone whose name is not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The book of Revelations reveal at the second death, it's the dead that will be judged, not the righteous. The righteous are not amongst the dead. As you can see, the second death is not meant for the righteous. 
The second death is for the sinners that didn't rise in the first resurrection, along with all the sinners that are alive during the millennial kingdom that didn't repent. All the sinners that allowed themselves to be deceived by Satan to fight against the righteous after the millennial reign. The righteous are predestined from the very beginning. Also, the scripture said they would be priests that reign with the Messiah for a thousand years. In addition, the Messiah said that the righteous would live like the angels. The angels are immortal spirits. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Israelites, did you notice the scripture said at the resurrection, no one will be given in marriage? I wanted to go a little deeper into this because there are certain Israelites that allow the lust of the flesh to deceive them still. Israelites, you can't be closed-minded when it comes to spiritual things. A lot of things are impossible with the carnal mind. With the spiritual mind, anything is possible. Israelites, we are not the only generation that walked the earth. You need to understand that every righteous person that ever walked this earth will rise at the judgment seat to receive their rewards. They will be partakers in the millennial kingdom. The righteous in this generation is not the only group of righteous people that ever lived. The remnant consists of people that lived from the time of Adam until the final generation. One of the reasons the end have not come, all the people that will inherit the coming kingdom haven't been born yet. Once the people who are predestined to be in the millennial kingdom is born, the end will come. Just like the times of the Gentiles is not coming to an end until all the Gentiles that are predestined to inherit the kingdom have been born and repented. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. As you can see, part of our blindness and loss of identity happen until the fullness of the Gentiles have come into the fold. There are Gentiles and Israelites that will inherit the kingdom and they are not born yet. As soon as the amount of Gentiles that will inherit the kingdom come into the fold, the times of the Gentiles will come to an end and the Most High will send our deliverer. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. I say all of this because in the resurrection, we will not be getting married. We will live like the angels, just as the scriptures state. Do you think we will live in this flesh body again when we live in eternity? Absolutely not. This body we have now is a temporary suit that housed the real you, your spirit. That is why the Messiah said you would live like the angels. We are spirit beings. The Most High commanded us to be fruitful and multiply to fill the earth before the end. Once the end comes, everyone who walked the earth, they will rise, some to glory and some to shame. There won't be a need to fill the earth. During the millennial reign, the remnant will inherit the earth while the sinners reap what they sow. Israelites, although it appear as if we have a free will, we may have a free will to choose, but the Most High have predestined who will inherit his kingdom from the very beginning. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Everyone that is predestined will be a part of the remnant. All who were not predestined will be a part of the sinners. Remember, the road that leads to destruction is a broad road. Everyone that is called are predestined. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified and whom he justified, them 
be also glorified. I know the truth is a hard pill to swallow, but Israelites, you have to wake up now. The fairy tales in the form of religious doctrines the workers of iniquity brainwash you with is putting you to sleep. The people who are not predestined are sinners. All the people that was aborted as babies that didn't get the chance to live will inherit the coming kingdom, all who are predestined. I hope when you look at it in that perspective, you will comprehend the Messiah when he said in the resurrection, no one will be given in marriages. The earth will be populated. Also, our current body is not the original body the Most High made. When the Most High made Adam and Eve, they had a body that was much different from the body we have now. We are altered beings. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done, and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? Your human body is housing your spirit. Your spirit is the real you. None of you have ever seen your spirit. Your human body can seal your spirit. Israelites, that is why the body returned to the dust. From the dust it came to the dust it returns. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Your spirit goes to the hallowed places the Most High created to receive the spirit of all men. Israelites, the time have come for you to realize that we are more unique than you know. The scriptures said we are made in the image and likeness of the Most High. A lot of people focus on the part that say we are made in the image of the Most High. Most of you skip over the part that said we are also made in His likeness. Everything the Most High is, we are. We are the little versions of Him. What is the Most High's likeness? Have you ever thought about that? We are not only made in His image, but in His likeness as well. Meditate on that. We learn in the millennial reign, the nations will continue to exist. The sinners that rise to inherit shame will reap what they sow. Everything they have done will return upon their own heads. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. During the millennial reign, the righteous will inherit the earth while the nations will reap what they have sowed. During the millennial reign, Satan will be bound. While Satan is bound, the earth can have its Sabbath rest. As you have learned, there are prophecies set to be fulfilled after the millennial reign. Once the Messiah 1000 year of ruling on this earth is over, Satan will be free from where he was bound. The scriptures let us know once Satan is free, he will go to deceive the nations again. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. The scriptures said Satan will deceive the nations again. That means before Satan was bound for 1,000 years, Satan was deceiving the nations. Most people are unaware that Satan have deceived the whole world. Despite the scriptures letting us know, Satan prowls around like a roaring lion looking for who he can devour. In addition, the earth is in the hands of the wicked. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The scriptures let us know Satan will be given the opportunity to deceive the nations for a little season. A little season can last a few days, weeks, months, or even years. The length of the little season is determined by the Most High. Once the millennial reign is over, Satan will have the opportunity to go to the nations to deceive them. 
Who are those nations Satan will deceive? Remember, some sinners will rise in the first resurrection. The people who was once first is now last. They will be the nations Satan will deceive. As you can see, Israelites, the Gentile nations will exist during and after the millennial reign. The earth will be populated with enough people for Satan to establish a large army to fight against the righteous living in the promised land. The scriptures let us know in the book of Revelation that the rest of the dead that didn't rise in the first resurrection did not live again until the thousand years were finished. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In the book of Enoch, it said not all sinners would rise in the first resurrection. Some would remain in Sheol. The book of Revelation let us know the dead that didn't rise during the first resurrection won't live again until the millennial reign is over. Did you hear that, Israelites? After the 1,000 year reign, the dead that didn't rise in the first resurrection will live again. The earth will be populated with people. To the Israelites who believe the earth will be empty during the millennial reign, it's not true at all. To those of you who was looking forward to being fruitful to fill the earth, everyone that needed to be born will already be born. During the millennial reign, the nations will be around to reap what they sow. The Israelites living during the millennial reign will be priests for the Most High and the Messiah, living in safety in the promised land. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Israelites, let the truth of the Most High's words set you free. There will be enough people in the world for Satan to gather a large army at Armageddon. The scriptures let us know that there will be people living in the four corners of this world. Satan will go to the four corners of this world to deceive the nations and to gather these nations of people to make a great army. The principality called Gog that controlled the land of Magog is where this great army will settle until they come to surround the righteous living in the promised land and around the great city Jerusalem. This final battle many people call Armageddon. The righteous whom Satan is coming to fight against won't fight in this battle. The Most High will fight for the remnant by sending fire from the heavens to consume the great army Satan gathered from the four corners of this world, Gog and Magog. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth encompassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them a lot of people often mistaken the principality or king that is called gog that controlled the land of magog to be one of japheth's sons gog is not japheth's son gog is the principality that rule in the land of magog he's the prince over the tribe of meshach and tabal and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. The kings of the earth are often compared to sea monsters in the scriptures. That is why the first beast, the Antichrist, is coming out of the sea. The first beast, the Antichrist, received his power by the dragon. Gog is a prince that ruled in the land of Magog. Magog is the son of Japheth. During the days of Japheth, the inhabitants of the earth often called their land by their names. The original names to all the land in this world can identify the rightful owners. The workers of iniquity that does the will of Satan in this world change the names to all the land in this world to conceal truth as well as to steal land that don't belong to them. Because the land is known as Magog in the scriptures, the word of the Most High will refer to it by its original name. 
the sinners that would dwell in the land of Magog after the millennial reign, along with other Gentiles, Satan have deceived from the four corners of this world, will gather in the land of Magog before they descend upon the Israelites and all the righteous that dwell near the city, Jerusalem. The scriptures in the book of Revelation say fire came down from heaven to devour the large army. The book of Ezekiel give us a little more detail about Armageddon. The scripture said that the large army was coming from the north. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. The land of the north belonged to Japheth. I'm not surprised that the large army will come from the land of the north. Everything that have to do with Satan comes from the north. Satan said in his heart that he would sit on the top of the congregation in the sides of the north. Satan's seat is in the north. The other species of mankind came from the north. I'm not surprised at all to the location Satan will gather the people to fight against the righteous in Jerusalem. The prophecy said that the Most High would smite the large army in parts. The Most High said that he would give their bodies to the birds to eat. The Most High said he won't allow anyone to play with his name. The Most High will make his name known to his people. At that great battle, the heathens will know the Most High to be the God of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. Israelites, did you hear how the Most High feel about his name being polluted? The scriptures went on to say the Most High will make his name known to his people. The scriptures in the book of Ezekiel let us know that the Most High will give the sinners that came down to fight against the righteous along with their prince, Gog, graves. The scripture said it would take seven years for the people to bury Gog and his multitude. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. And there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them. And it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. As you heard in the scriptures, Gog's army is massive. The Gentile nations that returned were deceived once again by Satan during the little season. The earth will be populated with a lot of people. The scriptures let us know the righteous will be at rest and dwelling safely in the promised land. There's absolutely no scripture confirming the righteous dwelling in the heavens by a rapture. I don't know how Gog and Magog will descend from the north to the great city to fight against the Israelites in the heavens. The time have come for the people to reject religious falsehoods and cleave to the truth the Most High is pouring out right now. Israelites, we will dwell safely in our land. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God, in that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? The battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog, is the final threat against the righteous living on this earth. After Armageddon, Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. 
the scriptures let us know the beast and the false prophet are already in the lake of fire. The reason the beast and the false prophet is already in the lake of fire, they were judged during the day of the Lord. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. The lake of fire is the final resting place for Satan, the ancient fallen angel that deceived the whole world from the very beginning. The scriptures in the book of Enoch let us know Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel are the angels that cast Satan and all the fallen into the lake of fire. And Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day and cast them on that day into the burning furnace that the Lord of spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. After the final battle of Armageddon is when the final judgment against Satan will be made. He will no longer be able to deceive the people anymore. We don't ever have to worry about Satan ever again. The righteous will be delivered from Satan and the earth will be cleansed from all the wickedness and the abominations the fallen angels have caused on this earth. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. Israelites, this is what will happen after the millennial reign is over. A little season is given to Satan to deceive the nations. Satan will gather a large army to fight against the people of the Most High in the great battle called Armageddon. The Most High will destroy the great army Gog and Magog. There's some people that believe the millennial reign is the Messiah's kingdom. That is false. The millennial reign is not the Messiah's kingdom. The Messiah said to us that his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. If the millennial reign is not the Messiah's kingdom, what is the Messiah's kingdom and where is the kingdom we all want to be a part of? You have to stay tuned for the next chapter in our journey through end time prophecy. The Most High wants to reveal the truth in parts. There's a lot of prophecy set to take place in the end times. Religion have polluted the scriptures with lies. The purpose of the gospel of the kingdom being heard is to reveal the truth so that the people won't be blindsided to what is coming their way. Israelites, don't expect the truth to correspond with the lies taught to you in religion and the beast system. Israelites, open yourself to truth. That is the only way you will become free. Until we meet again, allow the Most High to set you free with truth. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore.